So very often, something that happens when people come to mediation, either before they get there or when they arrive, is they say something to me along the following lines. We are stuck. We are going to get absolutely nowhere. Our positions, our points, our interests are just completely misaligned. And I don't see how, Adam, we are ever going to cross this giant bridge, this great chasm that we're separated by. Hi. My name is Adam Halper. I'm a mediator, collaborative attorney, and parenting coordinator. I face this sentiment, this question a lot, I would say, practically in just about every mediation that I have. And I do all kinds of mediation. I do matrimonial, family, employment, commercial, general civil litigation, trust in the states, and a whole bunch of other things. And this question, this issue, this sentiment is expressed to me on all of those cases at some point or another. And so there's one thing that I tell clients and, and very consistently, which is the following. Ask yourself an umbrella question. Ask your client an umbrella question. And if you Google umbrella question, you will see what is an umbrella question has a million different answers. It's, it can be used in the sales pitch. It can be used to mean something else. When I say an umbrella question, I mean it as follows. How can we address Adam's interest while also at the same time addressing my friend Ada's interests, thereby satisfying all of our interests. Thus, the umbrella covers us all. And let me give an example because it's, it's an easy thing to understand maybe as an abstract, but as an example, it, it maybe becomes a little bit clearer. So my interest is in, is in getting paid. Uh, Ada and I have had a mediation. We've come to a number that Ada is going to pay me some money. Uh, I want to make sure that I get paid. Ada wants to make sure that she can pay. Okay. So, and is concerned about the number we've arrived at and affording it. So maybe one thing that we can do is we could stagger the payments so that at a time during the year when Ada is more flush, she can pay me more. At a time when she anticipates being less flush, she can pay me less. We could adjust the payments based on the possible floor, meaning that if Ada is below a certain income level or for the last tax year or the last quarter, she can pay less. We could incentivize early payments. We could disincentivize late payments. And that's just off the top of my head. All of those things cover my interests, they cover Ada's interests, and they satisfy you know, the larger question of how can we get this done and satisfy both interests. I'm Adam Halper. I'm happy to talk to you more about this. See you next time. Thank you.